Hi. I have a little form over here that allows you to collect the first and last name of a person. However, in this video, I would like to extend this form by adding some validation. If we're going to be recording the first and last name of a person, then it does make sense that we perhaps do a couple of sanity checks. So I'm going to use this as a motivating example to show you how you can add validation to Raza forms in general. In Raza, if you want to validate data, then you can use custom actions for this. However, before we actually show you the code, it is good to observe just a couple of things. We are going to be validating the data for the form called name underscore form. And in particular, in that form, there are two slots that we are going to validate. It is also important that we recognize that these slots are going to be requested in order. So first we are going to be asking for the first name and then we are going to be asking for the last name. This is information that we are going to use in the implementation of our validation step. And here we have our validator. A validator is basically a custom action, but a specific type of custom action that should refer to a existing form. There is a naming convention that you can see in the name of this custom action here. And that is that we start by saying validate underscore and then the name of the form. This is how Raza is able to detect that this is the custom action that is going to be validating our data. Another thing to quickly point out is that there's also a naming convention in this method. In particular, it is validate underscore slot name. And this is how Raza finds the method that is going to check the data coming in for a specific slot. We're going to look at the implementation now, but it's good to also note that I have a helper function over here that is going to remove all non-alphanumeric characters from a string that's coming in. If we have a look at the implementation of validate first name, then we can see that we are using the clean name function right here. The way that these validation methods work is we pass along a slot value and this contains the data that we are about to set. That also means that we can apply any Python logic inside of this function to check whether or not the slot value is correct, but we can also change the slot value slightly. You see, what I'm doing here is I have this variable called name, and this is basically the same as the slot value, except that we take out all of the non-alphanumeric characters. So if I were to accidentally write down Vincent and then a dollar sign, then the variable name would basically just contain Vincent without this dollar sign. This allows me to check if the name actually contains proper characters, and if it doesn't, then I can say, hey, that must have been a typo. And then I can invalidate the data by setting the first name equal to none as the output here. Otherwise, I take the clean name and set that as the final slot value. The way that these validation methods work is you're able to say the output is a dictionary where the key is the name of a slot and then the value of that key is the final slot value. By setting it equal to none, you're basically saying the data is invalid and therefore Raza is going to ask again for the same information. But what I'm also doing here is I'm also saying, well, if the data is valid, then I can also pass in the clean data here as a slot value as well. You can also invalidate more than one slot. And there's an example of this in the validate last name method. Here, I'm doing pretty much the same thing as before. If there's a typo in the last name, then I am making sure that the last name is invalidated. But if it turns out that the first name and the last name together are just a really short string, then I can also invalidate both of these names with the idea that we are fearing a typo and that therefore we will have to restart the form. If everything is fine, we just return a dictionary indicating that the last name slot has been set. What I would now like to do is just give a quick demo of this. So I'm going to start a action server first And while that's running, I'm gonna start Raza Interactive in this shell to give a final demo. 
So let's start the form. The form is now started, and the first thing that it's doing is it's asking me my first name. And just for good measure, let's just return a couple of dollar signs just to see what would happen. The name form is still running. And where before it seemed like the first name was going to be just dollar signs, we can see that the validator kicked in and said, ah, that's not right. Let's ask for the first name again, because that must have been a typo. Let's now type just the letter V. So far, so good. First name has been set, and we are now asking about the last name. I'm now going to pretend like my last name is W in the hope that I'm going to hit the validator here. So right now we have V and W. The name form is going to run now, and the validator is going to be kicking in. And now it's able to pick up that, indeed, that was a really, really short name. It's probably not correct. We are fearing a typo, and therefore we are restarting. So let's try it again one more time. I will now type Vincent and then a dollar sign attached. This is being moved into the first slot. Let's see what happens when the validator kicks in. It has removed the dollar sign from the name, which is good. And let's now type warmer dam. And now it's detecting that both names are properly filled in. The validator is not complaining about anything, which means that we can move on, submit, and shut down the form because all the slots have been filled. So there you have it. We have a story where the validator is able to double check the input that we're getting in the form. And that can be nice in general because data quality is something that you want to keep in mind as you're collecting data from your users.